Good evening and welcome to Sunday Night Bible Study. If you have your Bibles at home, would you please take them out and follow us in the book of Acts chapter 4. We will look at verses 32 to 35 this evening as we move toward the conclusion of chapter 4 and on beyond in the next few weeks. But prior to our beginning tonight, may we pray. Father God, we just thank you for the privilege we have to come to your house and to worship. And Father, just to come into your word and just to see the beauty of of your working through these men in the early church and Father growing to reach people with for Jesus Christ and that Father we're challenged to continue the heartbeat to which they gave us that we too are faithful to carry forth the gospel and Father to give it to a world that is dying and hurting and in search of hope and that Father that we're faithful to carry forth the gospel message to which you've given us in Christ's name I pray amen we are in the book of Acts as I've shared and but uh, we are going to look on, into the church over the past few weeks, as you know, as we've kind of gone through chapter 4, has been the disciples praying for boldness, a bold heart, a bold, I guess, opportunity to share the gospel and the boldness of reaching people for Christ. And we have seen that as they were attacked after healing the lame man and they were bombarded and taken and arrested and, and let go. And just to really the struggle in the community and the struggle for the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees as they were working to oust and to get rid of the gospel as they had attempted to do with Christ and to kill him and Christ would arise from the dead and ascend and leave these men the job to do, the duty to go forth as the angel told them, men of Galilee, get busy. Get busy at the work to what you've called, been called to do. And that's the same that we've been given, being called to do is today is preaching the gospel. And we see here in Acts as these people, these men, the disciples are growing the church, is beginning to, to reach out into Jerusalem and beyond as these numbers are growing and the church is grow, growing and there's a vital heartbeat to a community. And we come here today at the really an ingredient in the local church and an ingredient among the people that would bring them together into one, to one bond, one church, one family, one fellowship, and one growth. And they began to come together and to share and to bring together their thoughts and their reasonings and their entire lives became as one. So that when they were within the body, when they had come together, it doesn't say a building, it doesn't say they came into a church house or a church building, but when they came together, just like us, when we come together on a Sunday and we're worshiping outside and how we would love to be back in the building or maybe back in where there's air conditioning or back where it's comfortable to us. And we go back inside because that's what we're so familiar to and we love this old place and we've always worshiped here. And that's, sometimes that gets in our minds. That begins to infiltrate us, that the church is the building. The church is where we come to. The church is where we sit with our families. And it is vitally important. It is vitally important. But to remember, in this picture here, there's not buildings as people and their hearts and their lives coming together, coming together as one in the name and the call of Christ. And as I was studying it, I was read, read this line that said that the, the courage the disciples displayed beyond the fellowship was dependent on the quality of life within the fellowship. And I believe that with all my heart. As a church comes together, and I've seen this church, I've seen South Oak Ridge pull together many times to do community outreach and community events. And then I've watched other churches come alongside and to be a part of maybe Magnified Ministries and Impact Yadkin, reaching out, reaching homes, reaching families, reaching a community, reaching a city for Jesus Christ. We've come together to complete over 100 projects in a week because everyone came with a common bond, a common denominator, the common goal of completing jobs, of reaching communities, whether you're working with children at the Vacation Bible School and the Party in the Parks, whether you're working with children at the Children's Ministry Division over at uh, Mount Carmel, or whether you're on a job site or you're cooking in the kitchen or preparing for worship or driving a van or taking care of water and, and outreach there's so many jobs there's so many calls and so many people involved in making the wheels turn and to make progress and all of that is done under the guidance of our lord it is done through him 
as we lead up to that point in prayer, and as always, we, as prior to impact, we have a 30-day prayer, a 30-day time that we come in and just really study God's Word and pray for all that takes place in our prayer committee with Melinda. She places out everything that needs to be done as we pray for homes and families and food teams and pastors and youth pastors and every worker and job sites. All of that's together. The success that is done out here in the world that's taken out there, our courage and our boldness that takes place out there all comes back here. Because without the support of everyone, no matter the age or financial status, without the, the support of everyone working together, it cannot take place. It must be. And that's the trueness of this statement. The disciples, our work out there depends totally back in here. Because if you have a body that's arguing or fighting or struggling and can't work together and there's a lot of, I guess, malice and envy and hate and anger and you can't suit anybody because they want it their way and they want it their way and they want it their way, when all of that begins to infiltrate in a body or in a family, there's destruction. Whether it's in a church family or a family at home or whatever the situation is, when those things begin to take place, you have those fractures and you have the struggles that begin to take place inwardly inside the family, there's very little courage to go out. And that's why tonight's passage is so important, because the vital church is growing. It is growing by leaps and bounds. It is growing so fast, these disciples, I don't think, can even understand of what's taking place. But the power of God is here. It is an unlimited commitment of Christ. That's the one ingredient here is the fact these men and their desire was to share Jesus Christ, was to take the gospel message to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the world. Their command is from Jesus. Their commander has told them this is what we're going to do, and they became unrelentless in their call and their duty, whether it was to go into the marketplace and heal the lame man and people not even like it and want to get rid of them, or where it was the duty to go door to door and to town to town. But that brings to life here is an uncommitment, but also it's an unrestrained loyalty to others. And I guess if we entitle tonight's lesson, it would be on loyalty. The loyalty of each other to each other and the loyalty of each other to the church and the loyalty of each other to Christ. Because when they began to work as one, they began to bring all the talents and gifts that became all into here, began to work. They began to work together and to see what was to go. But may we read 32 here. We'll read our passages through 35. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. And laid them at the apostles' feet. And they distributed them to each one as anyone has a need. What we see here is interesting, the word multitude. The word church is not even used. The word church does not even come about until chapter 5. And what we see in these passages this week and next week is really a common bond. Tonight we see a beautiful picture of the positive side of working together. The positive side of coming together as a church family, of praying together, of singing together, of worshiping together, of partaking of communion together, of sitting on the front lawn of the church, and of talking and sharing and celebrating what God is doing. It is a beautiful picture of that positive work that which God continues to do in lives and lives committing to him. Now, we have that choice. Churches can argue and struggle and fight and divide and break loose and start a new church. All of those things can take place. Fractures begin to enter a church because people become displeased with themselves or displeased with someone else, and it becomes all back to focus on us and not God. But what we see tonight is a beautiful picture of a church, of a community, of a multitude, the Bible says. It says, now the multitude of those who were believed. It's not even defined as a church. But when they began to come together, God entered the place. God shook it. 
Because we just saw last week, it says in verse 31, as they prayed, the place where they assembled was shook, was shaken. As they were filled with the Holy Spirit, he came and dwelt among them. And tonight we look at one of the ingredients of why God came and dwelt among them. It's because of the love and the bond for one another. But the word church is an interesting word as it will come upon us soon. It's called ecclesia, and it means to be called out and called together. Ek means out of, and kalo means to call in the Greek language. So out of, they've been called together as one people. They've all come from different places, different backgrounds, different social status, different jobs, different hearts. All are different people. We're all unique. We're all uniquely created in the image of God. We're all uniquely placed here with a gift and a talent to which God has given us. But when that begins to merge together, it begins to work as God has taken it. An assembly of believers gathered together for prayer and fellowship. That's why the church is so important. So many say, well, I can just worship online, or I can worship watching television of a mega church that's preaching the gospel, or I can just get up and I can sit there and get just as much out of it as going to church. And you probably can, or maybe even more than the church you may go to, or this church, or whatever. Maybe you receive more blessings because you're in your comfort zone. You're at home in the living room watching it, or in the bedroom, watching it on the computer, or wherever you are. Maybe those things are important. Maybe you've, that's your quiet place, you feel, your quiet time that you set. My friends, let me remind you. Let me remind you what the Scripture teaches us. The multitudes and the church came together. These people, these faithful followers, these builders of the church, did not worship in separate homes individually. They came together in verse 32. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. That's the very importance. And that's my worry sometimes over having internet and able to preach on television and carry it forth into the world. It's amazing. A tool that God has given the church and the world is an amazing gift. Because through the computer, we can, you can watch this message anywhere in the world, anytime you want to watch it. It's amazing, literally amazing, of what God has done through the Internet and through that work. But we must never neglect the coming together of worship and prayer and fellowship with believers. We must never do that. Because I know people travel to play sports, and they travel to play ball, and those sites are, you go camping, all these things are great, and it's in those places you have church, and that's where you need to be on that Sunday morning. If you're away, they have those Bible studies at ball tournaments or Bible studies at campgrounds, and they're very important. A local pastor probably comes in to teach them, and that's very important, and you're coming together to worship. And those are all great, and you should be, and I should be if I'm away. We're together in God's Word. But we must never neglect the coming back home and coming together as one church and coming into the church family and that a family opens their arms and brings you there. That we're called out to do what the Lord has called. In oneness, they went forth into the world to reach Christ, the gospel for people. I think about our world today and the division, the division and the dividing hearts within our society of people that believe one thing over here and they believe another thing here and they want to enforce it this way here and this is their thoughts over here. It all comes back, it's because of themselves. None of them are thinking of the greater good of the community, their neighbors and the people they're living with. It's all a selfish focus. And that's what begins to stir the selfishness and the anger and the me-centered life. It is all about me, they say. It is all about what I believe. It's all about what I think. It's all about what I think should take place. And when we begin to do that, when that begins to enter, whether it's in the church body, the family at home, or in the community, there becomes destruction, anger, violence, and corruption. We watch that. We watch that on the news channels. We watch that in, if you read the paper or watch it on the computer. All of that is taking place around us now, a very volatile and violent time in this country. It's all coming back, though, to the selfishness of individuals. If we came together into loving our neighbor and to loving each other, what a powerful blessing it is. But the oneness, I'll, if you got your Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'll read just a couple verses. In 12 and 13... Of chapter 12 of 1 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For the, by the Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. How true that is. Because Paul began to refer, interestingly, to the church. Earlier it was the multitude. In Acts it says, now the multitude. Then chapter 5 comes into the picture, and the church is described, the coming together of one another. We've been called out to come and to worship and to minister. But now Christ, and Paul takes it one step further. He begins to refer to the church as the body of Christ. For we are many members, but one. We are so as Christ, for by the Spirit we were baptized. We were baptized, no matter if you're slave or free, a Jew or Greek, it does not matter your background, it does not matter any part of you. The coming together to worship and to glorify God far outweighs that of the world. It's how Christ ministers through us. And he begins to take the parts of the body and use them individually to bring together the group to come on fire for Christ. That's what he's saying here. Because it says, And they all believed in one heart and soul. Neither did anyone lack. For what anyone possessed, they sold it. Verse 33. And with great power. There's that word dunamis again. Coming out. With, the, 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 with, with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. For they, they had the power of the Spirit of God. We see that power given to us in verse 31. Because and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and filled with the Holy Spirit and with the boldness to which God had given them. But that is the power has come to dwell upon these people. And here it says, and with great power coming together, the Holy Spirit indwelt the facility, indwelt their lives, and then they pushed out to share Christ. It wasn't until they came together as a multitude and as a group with one bond and one thought and one reason and one common goal, and that was the gospel, and God brought forth everyone with their different gifts and talents in there together, and then they left to go to the world that needed it the most. That's the duty of the church. That's the duty of South Oak Ridge Baptist Church. That is the duty of every church is to come together with that common bond and that common mold and take the power of God and be the witnesses for Jesus Christ of his resurrection. And great grace was upon them all. There we are back to God's grace. The grace of God. We briefly touched on that this morning through Noah. which says that Noah found grace, favor in God. I think of the grace of God to us. That grace is Jesus Christ. That grace to us is the Savior. It is the very grace of God that we exist and live. It's that special grace, that salvation grace, that redemption, that forgiveness of our Savior and Lord. And the grace came upon them. And it says in verse 34, Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all sold their possessions and begin to give them. They begin to give them to each other. But you notice there are four parts that come together here in the sharing of all things. It says, with one heart, in verse 32, and one soul, in verse 32, and they, and they, they had one blessing because the Bible says that they received the power. The power was not individually based. They all received the power of God. They all received the grace of God. There was one blessing upon each on all of them. They were all blessed together. It doesn't say individually Peter received it, individually John received it. It says nothing of the nature. It says they all received the blessing with one heart and one soul and with one great conviction is the fourth ingredient. It is a great conviction in their hearts to reach people for Jesus. And that's what must be the duty of our churches is reaching people for Christ. When people pass the road here and see our church in South Oak Ridge, what comes to their mind? What comes to their mind? 
Is it a church that is on a common goal with a common bond whose fellowship is sweet and you're at home in the Lord and you come and you sit together and you worship together and if there's a need, the neighbor helps neighbor and reaches out in any way they can? Is that what people see at this church? That's what they should think of when they pass here. That is a godly, God-fearing, loving church where a family of believers come together to accept those that come in and share the gospel to lead them to Christ. That's what it says here in this passage. They all came together. They took their possessions and gave them and wherever needs were met. And I think about that here through tithing and so many give in so many ways financially to this church and through youth ministries and uh, 2020 visions and regular church offerings. And maybe it's the, this morning as we look to gold to the baby bottles to raise money for compassion care and money to the Christian ministries and money to impact Yadkin and Hands of Hope and all of these, all of these ministries. People's giving. It's the same picture as here with this church. They're giving to the Gideons. They're giving financially so that those groups may continue the work to which they do. And when people give to our church, and we take that money in this church and prayerfully use it to, hit, to God's common good and to where it's needed most, that's what this is teaching us tonight, that we all come together in this church with one heart and one soul. Do you find it interesting that came the picture? Because Christ had told those people to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And it says here they had one heart and one soul. They became as one. The heart, cardia, is the word in the Greek language. And it really defines our reasoning, our emotions, our will, our whole being. Everything dwelt through the heart. It was life. For the heartbeat is life. It is life for us individually. It is life as a church. It is life as a Christian body that our hearts are beating in one with Christ. It says and they had that one heart. They had that one emotion. They had that one reason, that one will, that one convicting duty that they were given to reach people for Jesus. And the soul, it is our life and our spirit. It says the Holy Spirit came and dwelt within them. He dwelt deep within their souls. The Bible is clear in saying that, that we are to love the Lord with all of our being, all of our will, all of our minds, all of our hearts, all that is within us. Everything, every part of us comes back to God. And it says this group came together, and I think of South Oak Ridge Church, and we are to do the same. And we do. We have a blessed church family, a loving church family, a praying church family, a giving church family. The sweet fellowship of this family is far greater than any place I've been. The love I have for this church and our families is we come together. And I watch that in our community. Anytime there's been difficulties or trials or struggles, there's a praying person. There's someone praying. There's someone reaching out. There's someone taking food. There's someone dropping by, seeing what we can do, seeing what they can do. Because they're part of this body. Then they come back here to worship and to fellowship and go back out. That's why neglecting the fellowship, neglecting the time at church, and neglecting the worship, you're never filled with that spirit. We see it right here. We see it given to us. When the multitudes came together with one heart and one soul, there they found, they found life. Because they, had the, they all received the blessing and they all had the conviction. They were all open to each other as the Spirit of God was upon them. And that's where we are here about our lives and the effects of all that we can do. We are to be open to the call God has given us. And it says in 34, there was no one among them who lacked anything. For all was sold, the houses and possessions and the proceeds, and were brought to them and laid at the apostles' feet. And they distributed each as anyone had need. I think of the vital part of this early church. It's not even the church yet. It's the multitude. I think of the vital part of this multitude who came and sat together, not in a church house. They may have assembled under the trees, wherever they were, or just assembled in an area. 
and began to pray and sing and praise the Lord for the blessings that he had given them. They began to sing and honor in the fellowship of God and take the prayer request of those among them and begin to pray for those that are sick and those that are hurting and those that are lost and those family members that needed the gospel and those neighbors that needed the love of only the neighbor could give by knocking on the door. They began to pray for all of those things. They began to see if there's needs in their community and needs in their families and needs in their own fellowship, and they began to meet those needs. They began to meet the physical needs and the spiritual needs and the emotional needs. They began to meet them because of that one great conviction was Jesus Christ. It says, all things were in common. It says, though, they began to say they were witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. They had the privilege of the resurrection, the privilege of the gospel. But what took place in their, in their multitude and what took place in those groups and in those families gave them the conviction and the energy and the authority and the power of God through the Holy Spirit to go out the doors to reach a world. We must never neglect the fellowship of a church family and the importance of a church. It must never be neglected. Whether we're worshiping outside and in our vehicles or under the oak trees or wherever we worship, it's never to be neglected because of the love we have for one another and the duty that God has called us to do. We all have a gift. We all have a talent and a gift from God. And to take that gift in our groups and in the fellowship, and to go forth. To go forth in Christ. It is how we grow together that we reach a world for Jesus. I think of the power of the Southern Baptist Convention as it sends missionaries around the world. It is thousands of small local churches, a few mega churches, giving a few dollars that we send thousands to minister throughout the globe. It all comes back to the local fellowship, the giving of so no one has the lack, and they go forth. It is the duty called by this church that we support and give, as we do to J.C. and his family away in Nova Scotia, reaching people for Christ. It was in this sweet fellowship they were called forth, and they went out from this place filled with the Holy Spirit and the power of God, and that we continue to give to them. We continue to give to our youth group and our men's mission teams and our ladies' teams and our ladies' fellowships, and those are all so important. It is the coming together, the bringing together of that bond and that sweet fellowship and prayer time with one another. They all receive that equal blessing in the Lord and then go to the world. That's the vital ministries of this church of South Oak Ridge, and may they never be neglected as we share the gospel. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for a Sunday night. We thank you, Father, for these men that came before us. They had no church to sit in and no air condition or heat to enjoy or, Father, no, no pews to sit on or cushions or anything. They came together for the conviction of Christ, the conviction of Jesus Christ. They came together to share and to pray and to be blessed and through that blessing and through the power of the Spirit of God to go into the world. Father, what a beautiful picture for us today in 2020 that we come weekly and set and challenged and charged to go forth in the call you've given us. And Father, may we be faithful in this church financially, faithful, Father, not only that, but prayerfully, faithful spiritually, faithful here as you've called us to do. In Christ's name I pray, amen.